The day had been long and draining, but not unusual for FBI agent Maya Reynolds. As she drove through the winding roads of a quiet suburban neighborhood, she felt the familiar exhaustion of another workday coming to an end. It was late, and the soft hum of her car's engine offered a rare moment of peace, a brief respite from the constant demands of her job. Maya wasn't in her usual suit and badge. Tonight she blended in, wearing casual jeans and a hoodie. To any passerby, she looked like any other tired commuter on her way home. The sky above was clouded, and the streets were empty, almost too quiet for a city that was usually buzzing. But Maya didn't mind. She welcomed the calm after the chaos. She reached for the radio, hoping to find something to drown out the silence, something to keep her company on this last stretch home. The gentle rain against the windshield seemed to mirror the soft rhythm of her thoughts, until something jolted her from the calm. In the rearview mirror, the bright flash of blue and red lights pierced the night. Her heart sank slightly as the police car appeared behind her, its lights demanding attention. Instinctively, Maya's grip on the steering wheel tightened, her body stiffening as a wave of uncertainty washed over her. She hadn't done anything wrong, but being a black woman driving alone in a quiet neighborhood, she knew that sometimes that didn't matter. As the police car drew closer, Maya's eyes darted between the road ahead and the flashing lights behind her. She wasn't familiar with this neighborhood. It was just another part of the city she passed through on her way home from the field office. The street seemed to stretch endlessly under the dim glow of the streetlights, each one casting long shadows that added to the sense of isolation. There was no one around, no witnesses to whatever was about to unfold. Maya considered her options. Should she keep driving until she reached a more populated area? Should she pull over immediately, as she had been trained to do? There was a tug of war in her mind. On one hand, she knew the law and understood the procedures. On the other, her experiences as a black woman in America had taught her to always be cautious, even when she had nothing to hide. The road stretched on in front of her, a winding path into the unknown, and the tension grew heavier with each passing second. After a deep breath, Maya decided to pull over, she signaled and slowly guided her car to the shoulder, the police car following closely. Her heart pounded in her chest, but she tried to remain calm. This was probably just a routine stop, she told herself. But as the blue and red lights continued to flash in her rearview mirror, casting eerie reflections on the wet pavement, the familiar weight of fear settled in her gut. Something didn't feel right. Maya's hands rested tensely on the steering wheel, as she watched the police car come to a halt behind her. The officer hadn't stepped out yet, leaving her with an uncomfortable stretch of time to think about what was coming. Her mind raced through the possibilities. Why had she been pulled over? She hadn't been speeding, nor had she violated any traffic laws. But then again, those details might not matter to whoever was behind her. She adjusted her rearview mirror slightly, catching a glimpse of the figure still seated in the police car. He appeared to be talking into his radio, taking his time before approaching her vehicle. The reflection in the mirror showed a white man, his face stern and unreadable. Maya couldn't help but feel a wave of unease wash over her. She had encountered officers like him before, those who saw her skin color before they saw her humanity. The thought made her stomach churn. The silence inside her car was thick, broken only by the sound of the rain hitting the roof. She could feel her pulse quickening, her mind flicking through all the protocols she'd been taught, both as an FBI agent and as a black woman navigating a world where interactions with law enforcement could easily turn deadly. She thought about her badge tucked safely in her purse. Should she show it immediately, or would that escalate things further? The rearview mirror reflected the same face, unmoving, as if waiting for the moment to strike. The car door finally swung open, and Maya's breath hitched slightly as the officer stepped out into the rain. She watched as he adjusted his belt, the faint outline of his holstered gun visible under the harsh blue and red lights. His movements were slow, deliberate, almost theatrical as he walked toward her car. Every step echoed in the back of her mind, a rhythm of intimidation that built with each footfall. Maya glanced down at her purse, where her FBI badge was tucked away. Do I show it now? Or wait? The officer tapped on her window with his flashlight, the sound cutting through the rain, and the silence in her car like a sharp blade. Slowly, Maya rolled the window down, allowing the cold night air to rush in. License and registration, 
the officer said, his voice curt, devoid of warmth or politeness. He didn't make eye contact, instead focusing on the inside of her car with a look of suspicion. Maya nodded, keeping her movements slow and deliberate. Of course, officer, she said, her tone calm but guarded. As she reached for her documents, she couldn't help but notice how his hand hovered near his gun, fingers twitching ever so slightly. The tension was palpable, like a tightly coiled spring waiting to snap. As Maya handed over her license and registration, the officer, his name tag reading Turner, snatched them from her hand with barely a glance. His eyes finally locked onto hers, and there was something unsettling in his gaze. What are you doing out here so late? He asked, his voice laced with suspicion. Maya forced herself to remain composed. Just heading home from work, officer. Work, huh? Turner repeated, the sneer in his voice unmistakable. His eyes flicked over her casually dressed appearance. Jeans, hoodie, no makeup. What kind of work has you out here in the middle of nowhere? Dressed like that? Maya clenched her jaw. Here it comes, she thought. I'm an FBI agent, she said, her voice steady. She didn't offer her badge yet not wanting to escalate the situation unless absolutely necessary. Turner let out a harsh, disbelieving laugh. FBI? Right. He leaned in closer, his face now inches from the window, eyes scanning her with blatant contempt. You expect me to believe that? Maya's heart pounded in her chest, but she maintained her composure. She had faced worse than this, much worse. But something about Turner's demeanor set off alarms in her mind. He wasn't just suspicious, he was hostile. It's the truth, she replied evenly, her voice betraying no emotion. I don't need to prove anything to you. Turner's expression darkened. He straightened up and took a step back, still holding her license and registration. Step out of the car, he ordered, his hand now firmly resting on the handle of his gun. Maya blinked. Excuse me, she asked, though she had heard him perfectly. She wanted to give him a chance to correct himself to realize he was making a mistake. You heard me, Turner barked, his voice rising with barely contained aggression. Get out of the car, now. She could feel the situation spiraling. Officer, I haven't done anything wrong, Maya said firmly. You don't have the right to ask me to step out without cause. I don't like your attitude, Turner shot back, his hand tightening on the gun's grip. I'm giving you a lawful order. Maya exhaled slowly, trying to keep her own anger in check. I'm not refusing your order, she said calmly, but I'd like to understand why you're asking me to step out. I've complied with everything so far. Turner's face twisted in frustration. You people always have to argue, don't you? He muttered under his breath, barely loud enough for Maya to hear. But she did hear it, and her patience was wearing thin. You people, the words stung, confirming what she had suspected from the start. This wasn't about any traffic violation. This was about her being black, driving through a neighborhood where Turner didn't think she belonged. Maya's fingers itched toward her purse, where her FBI badge sat, but she held back for now. She still wanted to believe she could resolve this without pulling rank. Turner stepped even closer, his presence looming over her window. Step out of the car, he repeated, his voice low and threatening. This was no longer a request. He was daring her to defy him, to give him a reason to escalate. Maya's patience finally snapped. She reached for her purse and, with deliberate calm, pulled out her badge. I'm a federal agent, Officer Turner, she said, holding the badge up for him to see. And you are dangerously close to overstepping your authority. Turner froze, his eyes locked onto the FBI badge. And for a moment, his entire demeanor shifted. His hand dropped from his gun, and the sneer on his face faltered, replaced by confusion and finally fear. You're FBI? Maya nodded, her voice steady but edged with frustration. That's right. And I suggest you step back and think very carefully about your next move. Turner's face went pale as he stared at the badge, the reality of the situation sinking in. For a brief moment, he seemed lost his bravado crumbling as the implications of his actions hit him. I didn't know, he stammered, taking a half step back from the car. I thought, yeah, ma you thought I was just another black woman you could harass. Maya finished for him, her voice sharp. You didn't think, that's the problem. 
Turner opened his mouth to respond, but no words came out. His eyes darted between her face and the badge, as if he were trying to reconcile the two images in his mind. How could she be an FBI agent? His expression said it all. His prejudice had blinded him to the possibility. The silence between them stretched, broken only by the steady drum of rain on the roof of Maya's car. The power dynamic had shifted completely. Turner, who moments ago had been full of swagger and authority, now stood there unsure of what to do, his confidence drained. I'm going to file a report, Maya said, breaking the silence. Her voice was cold, professional. You cross it a line tonight. Turner's eyes widened in panic. No, wait, he blurted, stepping back from the car, his hands raised in a feeble attempt to defuse the situation. Look, I didn't mean to. This isn't what it looks like. Maya shook her head, her patience long gone. It's exactly what it looks like, Officer Turner. You profiled me, and now you're trying to backpedal because you realized who I am. But that doesn't change what you did. Turner's eyes darted around as if searching for an escape, but there was none. He swallowed hard, the rain pouring down on both of them, his uniform now soaked. Look, let's just forget about this, all right? He said, his voice a mix of desperation and frustration. It was a misunderstanding. I didn't mean any harm. Maya stared at him, her expression unflinching. A misunderstanding? She echoed, her voice low but cutting. You threatened me. You had your hand on your gun, ready to escalate, all because you saw a black woman driving through your neighborhood. Turner's face flushed. He opened his mouth to defend himself but hesitated, realizing how hollow his words would sound. I... I was just doing my job, he mumbled, looking down at the ground. But even he didn't believe it anymore. Maya stepped out of the car, the rain now drenching her completely, but she didn't care. She had the badge in one hand and her dignity intact. Your job is to protect and serve, not intimidate and harass, she said firmly, taking a step toward him. The height difference between them was irrelevant now. Maya's authority filled the space between them. Turner shifted uncomfortably, the weight of his actions starting to crush him. I made a mistake, he said, his voice barely above a whisper. I didn't know. No, Maya corrected, her eyes locked on his. You didn't care. You didn't care to know. You saw me, made your judgment, and decided I didn't belong here. That's not a mistake, Officer Turner. That's a choice. The rain continued to fall, but in that moment, the storm outside was nothing compared to the storm brewing inside Turner. He opened his mouth to speak, but found himself silenced by Maya's unwavering presence. She wasn't just any citizen. She was an agent of the federal government, and he had just made the worst mistake of his career. Turner took a step back, the panic clear in his eyes. The power had shifted completely, and he knew it. What are you going to do? He asked, his voice shaky, his mind racing through the potential consequences of his actions. He could see his career slipping away, the badge he wore becoming a weight that dragged him down. Maya's gaze remained steady. What I'm going to do, she said, her voice calm but firm, is make sure this doesn't happen again. Not to me, not to anyone else. She gestured toward the police car. You've been doing this for a long time, haven't you? How many people have you treated like this? How many times have you gotten away with it? Turner didn't answer. He couldn't. The truth of her words cut deeper than any defense he could muster. He was no longer the one in control, and the fear of what came next was paralyzing. Maya glanced at the flashing lights still casting an eerie glow over the rain-soaked road. You're going to answer for this, Turner, she said, her voice calm but with an undeniable edge. Not just to me, but to the system you think you can manipulate. Turner's heart raced. He wasn't sure what terrified him more. The immediate consequences of being reported or the slow unraveling of everything he had built as a police officer. His reputation, his career, everything was teetering on the edge. Please, he stammered, his voice barely audible. I, I didn't mean to push things this far. Maya tilted her head slightly, her eyes narrowing. You didn't mean to push things this far, but you did. And now you'll have to face the consequences. She took another step forward and Turner instinctively stepped back, realizing that the power dynamic between them had shifted permanently. Turner's mind raced, desperately searching for a way out of the mess he had created. He had dealt with countless stops, 
but none had ever spiraled this far out of his control. The fear was palpable now, his body tense as he realized that his fate was no longer in his hands. You don't have to do this, he said, his voice cracking. We can figure something out. No one has to know. It was a weak attempt at negotiation, a final grasp at avoiding the inevitable. Maya's expression hardened. No one has to know, she repeated, her tone incredulous. Do you hear yourself? This is exactly why this has to go on record. You think this can be swept under the rug? That it's just another night where you get to walk away without accountability? She took a deep breath, the anger she had kept in check now surfacing. But not tonight, not this time. Turner felt the ground beneath him slipping. The authority he wielded so easily over others was now a weight dragging him down. Maya wasn't backing down, and there was no easy escape from what was coming. He could already imagine the headlines, the investigations, the eyes of the community turning against him. I didn't mean for this to happen, he muttered again, almost to himself. Maya's eyes narrowed. You keep saying that, she said, her voice like steel. But that's the problem. You didn't think. You just acted on your bias, your assumption that I didn't belong here. And now you're trying to escape responsibility. The rain continued to fall in sheets, drenching them both, but neither moved. The storm outside was a reflection of the storm inside Turner, as his mind struggled to find a way out. But there was no way out. He had crossed a line, and now there would be a reckoning. For a moment, Maya considered her options. She could walk away, leave Turner with the guilt and fear of what might come next. But that wasn't enough. She knew that the system Turner represented wouldn't change unless people like him were held accountable. You're going to have to face this, she said, her voice firm. Turner stared at her, his face pale and wet from the rain. Please, he whispered, his bravado completely gone. I'll lose everything. My job. My reputation. Maya's expression didn't soften. That's not my concern, she replied coldly. Your actions led you here. You can't undo what you did tonight. And you can't keep doing this to people who look like me. Turner's shoulders slumped. For the first time, he understood the full weight of what he had done. Not just to Maya, but to countless others before her. The realization was crushing, and the fear of what was to come swallowed him whole. Maya reached for her phone, her fingers trembling slightly as she dialed the number for internal affairs. Turner's eyes widened in terror as he realized what was happening. You don't have to do this. He repeated, his voice now frantic. I do, Maya said simply, because if I don't, you'll do this again, and again, and again. She pressed the phone to her ear, waiting for the line to connect. Turner stood there, frozen in place, his world collapsing around him. As the phone rang, Maya glanced back at Turner one last time. This is about more than just you and me, she said quietly. It's about making sure this stops. As Maya spoke to internal affairs on the phone, Turner's panic became undeniable. His breathing grew rapid, and he took a step toward her, his hand half raised as if to plead. Please, he said, his voice barely audible over the rain. This will ruin me. I made a mistake. I didn't mean it. Maya glanced up from the phone, her expression calm but resolute. You think this is just about you, she said, her voice cutting through the night air like a blade. This is bigger than one bad decision, Turner. This is about a system that allows officers like you to get away with this over and over. Turner swallowed hard, his gaze shifting from Maya to the dark, empty road around them. The isolation of the scene mirrored the loneliness he felt growing inside him. The realization that he was trapped. I can change, he whispered, almost as if trying to convince himself as much as her. I'll be different. Maya shook her head slowly. This isn't about you changing, she replied, her tone unforgiving. This is about a system that needs to be torn down and rebuilt. You're just a symptom, Turner. There are hundreds like you, and nothing will change until someone holds you accountable. Turner looked like he wanted to argue, but the words wouldn't come. The weight of Maya's badge, her authority, hung between them like a stone wall. I never thought, I mean, I didn't realize who you were he finally muttered, as if that would somehow justify his actions. That's the problem, Maya said, her voice cold. You didn't care to realize who I was. You didn't care to realize who anyone you've stopped might be. You saw what you wanted to see, 
a black woman who didn't belong in your world, and you acted on it without thinking twice. The rain pounded harder, drenching both of them, but neither seemed to notice. This was no longer a routine traffic stop. It had become a battle of wills, a confrontation between an individual and a system that had enabled him for far too long. Turner stared at her, his face pale and soaked. For the first time, he understood the full extent of his actions, not just tonight, but throughout his career. The stops he had made, the people he had profiled, the countless times he had wielded his badge like a weapon rather than a shield. The enormity of it hit him all at once. Maya's phone call ended, and she lowered it slowly, tucking it back into her pocket. They'll be here soon, she said quietly, watching as Turner shifted on his feet. You'll have to explain what happened, and this time, there's no way out. Turner's shoulders slumped as if the weight of the world had fallen on them. I was just following orders, he mumbled, his voice broken, doing what I was trained to do. Maya stepped closer, her eyes blazing with a mix of fury and sadness. No, she said, her voice strong. You were following your own prejudice. Your training didn't tell you to pull me over. It didn't tell you to treat me like a criminal just because I'm black. That was you. The wind picked up, carrying the rain sideways across the deserted road. Turner didn't move, his eyes fixed on the ground, unable to meet Maya's piercing gaze. The truth in her words was undeniable, and for the first time, he was forced to confront the man he had become. Maya's voice softened slightly, though the steel edge remained. I've been in your shoes, she said quietly. I've been in law enforcement long enough to know how easy it is to let the badge go to your head. But that doesn't excuse what you did. Turner looked up, his eyes filled with regret. What happens now, he asked, his voice trembling. It wasn't just his job he was afraid of losing. It was his entire identity, the life he had built around the power and authority of being a police officer. Without it, what was he? Maya sighed, her expression a mix of empathy and resolve. Now, she repeated, now you face the consequences of your actions, just like everyone else. That's the only way anything will change. The distant sound of sirens broke the tension between them. Turner's backup was arriving. Only this time, it wasn't to assist him. It was to hold him accountable. The flashing lights appeared in the distance, growing brighter with each passing second. Turner's face paled further, his body tensed as he looked back at Maya, panic setting in once again. You don't have to do this, he pleaded one last time, his voice hoarse with desperation. I can fix this. Maya's expression remained unchanged. It's not about fixing this one moment, she said firmly. It's about fixing everything that led to this moment, and that starts with you being held accountable. The patrol cars pulled up beside them, their lights cutting through the rain-soaked darkness. Officers stepped out, their faces a mix of confusion and professionalism as they approached the scene. Maya didn't flinch as they neared. She stood tall, her FBI badge still visible, her presence commanding. Turner's colleagues approached cautiously, unsure of what had transpired. One of the senior officers stepped forward, his eyes flicking between Maya and Turner. What's going on here, he asked, his tone neutral but curious. Maya spoke first, her voice calm and authoritative. Officer Turner stopped me without cause. He escalated the situation unnecessarily, and when I revealed I was an FBI agent, he attempted to backpedal. I've already contacted Internal Affairs, and they'll be here shortly to handle the rest. The senior officer's eyes widened slightly, but he maintained his composure. He nodded slowly, processing the situation. Turner, meanwhile, stood frozen, the reality of what was happening crashing down on him in full force. His colleagues were no longer there to support him. They were there to witness his downfall. I see, the senior officer said quietly. He turned to Turner, his expression hardening. Mark, we need to have a conversation. Turner's face drained of all color as his superior addressed him. The weight of his actions, the badge he had once worn with pride, now felt like a noose tightening around his neck. His mind raced, desperately trying to find a way out, but there was none. His career, his reputation, everything he had built was crumbling before his eyes. Maya watched in silence as Turner was pulled aside by the senior officer. She could hear snippets of their conversation, Turner's weak protests, 
the officers' calm but firm responses. It was clear that Turner's fate was sealed. As the rain continued to fall, Maya felt a mix of emotions. There was a sense of justice, yes, but also a deep sadness. This wasn't just about one officer. It was about a system that had allowed men like Turner to operate unchecked for far too long. And while this was a step in the right direction, she knew the fight was far from over. As the officers dealt with Turner, Maya stood by her car, her mind racing. The rain had slowed to a drizzle, but the storm inside her hadn't subsided. She thought about all the people who didn't have a badge to protect them in situations like this. People who faced the same prejudice and fear, but didn't have the power to fight back. She thought about the countless others who had suffered at the hands of officers, like Turner. People whose stories would never be heard whose lives had been forever changed by a system designed to oppress. Maya's heart ached for them, but it also burned with determination. She had to do more. She had to keep fighting, not just for herself, but for everyone who had been silenced. This moment, this confrontation, was just one small part of a much larger battle, and Maya knew she had the strength to face it head on. Turner, now standing in the rain with his head down, made one last attempt to salvage what little dignity he had left. I, I'm sorry, he muttered, his voice barely audible over the sound of the rain and the distant sirens. Maya turned to face him, her expression unreadable. Sorry isn't enough, she said quietly. You need to be better. You need to make sure this never happens again, not to me, not to anyone. Turner nodded slowly the weight of her words hanging over him like a storm cloud. He had been given a chance, a chance to change, to reflect on the man he had become. Whether he took that chance or not was up to him. As Turner stood in silence, his world crumbling around him, the realization of what was to come settled in. The sound of internal affairs officers arriving in the distance felt like a death knell to his career. His colleagues kept their distance the atmosphere thick with an unspoken understanding that he had crossed a line that couldn't be ignored. Maya watched him, her eyes unblinking as she considered the gravity of the situation. She had the power to press charges, to take this to the highest levels of accountability. Turner had abused his authority, not just with her, but likely with countless others. Tonight, though, it wasn't just about punishing Turner. It was about holding the entire system accountable. As the internal affairs officers approached, one of them greeted Maya with a nod of recognition. Agent Reynolds, we'll take it from here, he said, his voice professional and clipped. Turner glanced at the officers, his face pale, the reality of the formal investigation finally dawning on him. As the internal affairs team began their formal questioning of Turner, Maya stepped aside, watching the scene unfold. She wasn't done, though. This moment wasn't the end. It was the beginning of a much larger fight. She knew that dealing with one officer wouldn't change the system overnight, but it was a step. And Maya had always been willing to take one step at a time if it meant progress. She pulled out her phone again, not to make another call, but to jot down notes, her mind already spinning with ideas for her next move. She had a network of allies, fellow agents, and advocates who could push this case into the national spotlight if needed. The public needed to know what had happened not just for her sake, but for the sake of all those who had been silenced. Maya's resolve hardened as she watched Turner being escorted to the patrol car, his hands shaking, his voice weak as he tried to explain himself. This was about more than just one man losing his job. It was about creating lasting change. With the scene now under control, Maya took one last look at the flashing lights, the police cars, and the rain-soaked road. This was a night she wouldn't forget not because of what had happened to her, but because it was a stark reminder of the work that still needed to be done. The fight for justice wasn't over, not by a long shot. She got back into her car, her fingers gripping the steering wheel as she took a deep breath. The rain had slowed to a gentle patter, but inside the storm of emotions still raged. Maya had faced countless challenges in her career, but this one was personal. This wasn't just about her badge or her authority, it was about standing up for every person who had ever been mistreated, profiled, or discriminated against. As she pulled away from the scene, Maya knew that her journey was far from over. But she was ready, ready to confront the system, ready to demand change, ready to be the voice for those who couldn't speak.